Hey guys, so we are back to the basics here for this bonus and I'm just going to take this time to show you guys under the hood of the vehicle, uh, of vehicles. I got two vehicles here, 2008 Chrysler Aspen and in 2011 Ford F-150 and just kind of walk you guys through some of the different components under the engine just for you guys who aren't super familiar um, with being under the hood of a vehicle. So, show you what we have here. We're going to start out with this one. So here we have a 2011 Ford F-150. Okay, and this one's got a 5 liter engine. And you can see, oh, by opening the hood, that entire grill cover comes up with the hood. So that's kind of nice for servicing them. Uh, you can see right here is our radiator. Right here is a transmission cooler. Right here is our horns. Okay, um, this is our hood latch mechanism, and let's see, check, start checking some stuff out here, so, alright, right here's our fuse panel, and you can see all the different fuses and relays, these are all fuses, these are mini fuses, these are larger fuses, and then these back here, these square little black things are all relays, so all these are relays, um, but here's our under the hood fuse panel, okay, Let's see, so here, this big black piece right here, that is our air box. This is our antifreeze or our coolant reservoir. So our air filter is behind here. Um, our brake fluid reservoir, right here, mounted against the firewall. That's our brake booster right there. Okay, this sensor right here is our mass airflow sensor. It's always located on the intake tube. And we're moving. Okay, obviously this is our battery. Here's where we add washer fluid. Right here's our AC ports, our low side and our high side AC ports, and I have the plastic caps removed on this one. Okay, so we'll start looking at the engine itself here. So right here is our where we add our engine oil. That's our engine oil filler cap. And you can see this right here, this little thing with a black hose attached to it. This is our PCV hose. PCV stands for Positive Crankcase Ventilation, and that's so we don't get a pressurized crankcase or pressurized engine from some of the exhaust gases that blow past the piston ring. Uh, right here is our individual ignition coils. Coil on plug. So by removing these, we gain access to the spark plugs. And let's see, okay, right here, Right here is our throttle body assembly, and you can notice on this one, there's no throttle cable attached to it. There's no cable on either side, just wires. So this one is actually a fly-by-wire or an electronic throttle body. Um, it's totally, it's an electro, electronic servo motor in there, totally electronically operated, no cables whatsoever, which is a fairly new design. Older vehicles all have throttle cables. Okay, so here's our coils on this side of the bank, this side of the engine. There's our engine oil dipstick. Tucked right into the valve cover there in this engine. And again, these are our valve covers. These big covers on the side of the engine here. Okay, right up front and center here. This is our intake manifold or upper intake manifold or upper intake plenum, it's also known as. Okay, so this here is just a little ground strap extra body ground and if we look down in here we can see our serpentine belt our serpentine belt tensioner down here we have our harmonic balancer right up here is our water pump and if you can see that down here we actually have so get a little light on there down here we actually have our AC compressor now when the engines running and the AC is off, that centerpiece stays stationary, and this outer ring is the idler that spins. As soon as you turn the AC on, that inner piece engages. A clutch engages, the intersection starts turning the air compressor when the AC is turned on. And over here, you can see, you can barely see that right there. Oh, hard to get focused at that. So that right there is our alternator tucked down there in this engine. Okay, one last thing. Right here is our ABS block. 
It's our anti-lock brake computer, anti-lock brake valve body, and our anti-lock brake motor. All in that unit right there. Okay, so that's the Ford 5 liter engine. They're all kind of similar. So now we'll switch over to this Chrysler. Chrysler Aspen, 2008 Chrysler Aspen with a 4.7 liter V8. And you can see, we've got a little bit of the same thing. Um, now this one we have actually have a radiator cap. The other one we had just a reservoir cap. And also here's our reservoir, engine coolant. Here's where we had washer fluid. Here's where we had power steering fluid. Here's our engine oil fill. And our brake fluid right there. And finally, here's our transmission dipstick and our engine oil dipstick. So our transmission dipstick, you can see we did not have one on the Ford. It's actually down on the bottom of the, tra or it's down by the transmission. And you actually have to be underneath the vehicle to check the transmission fluid. So it's kind of annoying, but that's how they do that. Okay. On this engine, our air cleaner is under here. And this is just kind of an air box, just an empty box where the uh, intake air comes through and goes into the throttle body. Okay, so on this one, you can notice this one has a mechanical cooling fan. The Ford, I can hop back over there in a minute and show you that, has an electronic one only. So you can see it's got what we call a fan clutch here. Okay. And how that works is, see how easily I can rotate it right now? If I can get my hand in there. I can rotate it pretty easy. As this engine warms up, that fan clutch, which you can't see real well, the fan clutch right there actually tightens up. There's a coil in there and with temperature it tightens up and it's gonna make that fan spin faster and faster. Real quick, hop back over to this Ford. And we have obviously no cooling fan. We do have electric fans, which are really hard to see. Okay. Yep. There's our radiator. There's our electric fans. Okay. So there you saw that. One thing I wanted to show you guys on this, just kind of odd. Chrysler on some of their engines use two spark plugs per cylinder. So on this engine, you can see here's our ignition coil and we also have a spark plug wire. So beneath this ignition coil, there's a spark plug down here threaded into the cylinder head. Also, if we follow that spark plug wire around to the side of the head here, there's another spark plug. So that's really, really odd, but that's how they do it. They have, so it's a V8, so it's actually got 16 spark plugs. And I guess that's just their way of making uh, more efficient combustion, but that's what they do. So, okay, here's our power steering fill. And let's see, what else are we gonna show you in there? Here's our fuse panels on this vehicle. This right here is our engine computer, ECM, PCM. Okay, let's see. Here's our alternator on this one right here. This is our AC compressor on this engine here. And looking down in there, of course, here's our serpentine belt again. Not too much we can see down there. There's our tensioner. Let's see, we'll go back over to this side. Okay, you can't see that very well, but that's actually the power steering pump down there. And we have our water pump, which is the very center one connected to the right, right there, connected to the uh, fan clutch. Really hard to see, but <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so you get the idea, I hope that helps. Um, let me think. So basically, oh, one last thing. There's our AC port, doesn't show up. Our AC port, one right here, and the other one is pretty hidden on this vehicle. I'm gonna have to try to remember where it is. Oh, it's actually just right here, not too bad. So there's our two AC ports on this vehicle. One right here, and one right there. Okay, a um, couple other things. So our tires uh, on these right here, this is our valve stem. And you can notice this, this valve stem is not rubber, it's actually aluminum. 
That's because it has a tire pressure monitor in it, tire pressure sensor. And right in the center here is our Schrader valve. You can hear that releases air just by pressing on the center. So to remove air out of a tire, you can take a tire pressure gauge tool and it has a little, uh, that little nipple on the end. So you can actually just press that right there against it and remove air pressure. Again, to check pressure, you just use your tool and we have 35 PSI, which is exactly where we want it. All right. So I think that's it, guys. Hopefully that helps. And if you have any questions, go ahead and comment those or uh, put them on the Facebook group, and we'll do our best to answer them. Thanks a lot. See ya.